Bennett events, right? The second event, its probability is not affected by the occurrence of the first one. If the two events are dependent, means the occurrence or the probability of the second event is affected by the occurrence of the first event, right? Which means the two events, if they are dependent, the second one is going to be affected by the first one. If they are independent, the second one is not affected by the first one. Right? So make sure you are familiar with your independent and dependent events. Now, we have got what's called the multiplication law of probabilities. Now, this law is mainly for independent events. So the probability of, of two events occurring at the same time is always equal to the probability of the first event times the probability of the second event. Please don't confuse this with uh, mutually exclusive events. With mutually exclusive events, it would be P, A, or B. Now here it's P, A, and B, which means you're talking about an intersection. That is two events happening at the same time. What is the probability? Just multiply the probabilities of the two events. And then you come up with this famous uh, multiplication law of probabilities. P A and B will always be equal to the probability of the first event and the probability of the second event. Okay? Now, this multiplication law, you will need it when you are doing questions on tree diagrams, also when you are doing questions on contingence tables, which are, I will introduce probably around Wednesday or so. Okay, so up to this point, you have four probability identities or four formula on probabilities. Mutually exclusive events, addition rule, complementary rule, now you have got the multiplication law of probabilities, which mainly deals with independent events. Please take note, this equation is for independent events. If they are dependent, you cannot use it. Okay? But, well, sometimes we use it in actual fact. We use uh, the addition law in some questions involving uh, dependent events. All right? We also use it as well. Some questions involving dependent events, we use it. It's mainly for independent events. All right. So, all right. Now, once you get, let's say you get a head first and then you roll a dice, you have six possibilities after that. Okay? So, you can get a one, you can get a two, you could get a three, you could get a four. You get a five, or you could get a six. Okay, you, you need to pay attention. If you toss a coin, there are two possible outcomes. And the probability of each outcome is a half. Okay? So if you toss a coin first, right? The first, if you toss a coin first, you might get a head. You might also get a what? A tail. So at this, uh, uh, you are not tossing it two times. You are tossing the coin once. But when you toss a coin once, there are two possibilities. Do you get that? You are tossing it once. Yeah, but how many possibilities do you have if you toss a coin once? Two. Wait. Then, the second, the second set of outcomes comes from the dice now. Okay? So, when you roll a dice, you get six possible outcomes. Okay, let me finish. Right, so you can also get a tail 
first, then you get the head, sorry, a one, a two, or a three, and so on. So three, then four, five, and then six. Right? So here you can get a one, you get a two, a three, a four, a five, or a six. You can also get a tail first, then you can get a one, a two, a three, a four, a five, or a six. Okay? Now, what is the probability of getting any one of those numbers? One over six. So that's one over six through out. Please bear with me here. I don't have space, but my division line is supposed to be horizontal. Please, when you write your division line, it has to be a horizontal line. I'm only doing this because of space issues. Okay? So that's the 1 over 6, 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 1 over 6. Okay? You're following there. Now it's very important for you to know that for the first activity that is tossing a coin, we have two possible outcomes. For the second activity of rolling a dice, we also we have, we have got six possible outcomes, but because of the combinations, we end up having a total of what? Twelve. So the combined outcomes now is gonna be head one. You can have a head and a two. You can have a head and a three, a head and a four, a head and a five. You can have a head and a six. You can also have a tail and a one, a tail and a two, a tail and a three, a tail and a four, a tail and a five, and then a tail and a six. So in total, how many possible combinations are you supposed to have? There are 12. Okay, in total. I'm talking about the combined uh, outcomes. There will be 12. Okay, so from this tree diagram, it's very important for you to know that if I add the probabilities for each activity, they must give me a 1. So if I add here all those 6 all those one over sixty-six times, you get a, you get a one. If I add all of them there, you also get a what? A one. Okay. Then we now have to use this tree diagram to answer questions. So here we are dealing with independent events. Okay. The probability of getting a head and a one, we have to use the multiplication law of probabilities. We want to know the, what is the probability of getting a head and also a one. We have to use the multiplication law of probabilities. Now it's vital that you you understand is that the, the multiplication law of probabilities is only used mainly for independent events. Okay, so here we have got independent events. So let's answer the question now. So man who flips a coin and rolls the dice, determine the probability as it has common factors in similar form that Manuel uh, gets a, an H, okay, a H and then a 4. Okay? So go to the tree diagram, the probability of getting H and a 4 out of 12 is going to be what? Huh? Number one over twelve. Now there are two ways of, 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 get, of getting the answer. This is a different question. So let me just go to the next page. So the probability. This will be C. C one. So that's C one. So the probability of getting an H and a four. Okay, we can use the multiplication law of probabilities. We know that the probability of getting a head is a half, the probability of getting a four is it's one over six, so you get one over twelve. So you can use the multiplication law of probabilities. You can also use your tree diagram. You see we have got the total of 
If you add, if you add the total number of outcomes here, it's a 12. Okay? But getting a head and a four is only one out of those 12. So there are two ways of getting the answer. You can get it directly from the tree diagram, or you can use the multiplication law of probabilities for independent events. Okay? You're following that. So there are two ways. You can decide which way you want. Then, of getting a tail and a six is again the same answer. So, the probability of getting a tail and a six, if I use the multiplication law, it's going to be half times one over six, and that will give me one over two. Okay. Then, the probability of getting an H and an odd number. Now, this one now, it has got many possibilities. So, we're going to get an H and an odd number. So, we have got that one, we have got that one, and we have got that one. Those are the three possible outcomes. Right? Now, there are two ways now of getting that answer. I'll show you both ways. You can get the answer from the tree there. So, how many possibilities here? For how many outcomes? Three. For three out of what? Twelve. So, you can write here P, H, and an odd number. Okay? For so this, you can write it as well, the light is 3 over 12 straight away, which is the what? A quarter. That's one way. Another way, which is a long way now, is to use the multiplication law, but you now have to add the products, because you're talking about three combinations. Or rather, you're talking about three possible outcomes. So, P, H, and an odd number, This will be equal to a half times one over six plus another half times one over six plus a half times one over six. This is a longer method now as compared to the work which you can use from the tree diagram. So this will give you one over twelve plus one over twelve plus one over twelve. And this will be three over twelve. And this gives you the quarter. Okay? The first man method is, is much easier, but uh, sometimes we might need to use the second method. Now, there's a question which came in the trial examination paper, last question of the paper. So far, most of the metrics are having problems with that question. Can I have your attention? Can I have your attention? All right, so if you read the question carefully, it says a bag contains three red balls, two blue balls, and five white balls. A ball is selected, its color is noted, and then it is replaced. So you have got a bag, there are three different colors of balls in the bag. The total number of balls is 10, right? So a second ball is selected, its color is noted, then it is replaced. So the total in the sample space here does not change because there is replacement. Okay? There is replacement here, which means we are dealing with independent events because the second outcome is not affected by the first one because of that replacement. If the total in the sample space were to change, then we end up having dependent what? Events. As long as the total in the sample space changes, then we have what? Dependent events. Okay, so the first question, your answer here, it will be a yes. Then the reason may be an open question where you can say because the second outcome is not influenced or affected by the first outcome. Is not influenced by the um, 
uh, the first hour chart. Okay. Then the next question says you draw the tree diagram. Now we need a fresh tape for that. Now, in order to draw your tree diagram, you need to be aware that there are two possible outcomes. Each outcome has got many possibilities. Okay? So, the first outcome is going to have three possibilities. First outcome is going to have three possibilities. You can you put your hand in the bag and then take out a red ball first. Okay, you can take out the red ball first, or you can take out the blue one, or you might take out the white one. Now, the second time you do it, if you take a red ball out first, you might get another red, or you might get a blue one, or you might get the white one. If you took out a blue one first, you might get a red one, or you might get a blue one second, or you might get the white one first. If you took the white one first, you might get the red, then you might get the blue one, or you might get another white one. Right? Now, the probability of this possible outcome here is it's going to be 3 out of 10. Then, then it's 2 over 10, which is 1 over 5. And then here it's going to be a half, because we are dealing with 5 over 10. Right? There is replacement, so the total in the sample space doesn't change, which means we are dealing with independent effects. Okay, so this will also be 1 over 5, that will be a half, that's 3 over 10, that's 1 over 5, and that's a half, and then we have 3 over 10, then we have got 1 over 5, and then a half. So, how? how our combined outcomes, you can have two reds, or you can have a red and a blue. You can also have a red and a white one, or you can have a blue one and a red, or two blue holes. Then you can have a blue one and a white one. You can have a white one and a blue one, or you can have a white one, so a white one and a red one. That's blue and white, and that will be white and red, and then white and blue, and then two white holes. Okay, so this will be your tree diagram. Then, you have to use it to answer those questions. So, find the probability as a common budget in the simplest form of selecting Select two blue balls. Okay, if you go here, it will be just 3 over 10. So it will be uh, 1 over 5 times 1 over 5. So we are talking about the probability of getting that. Okay? In total, we have how many possible outcomes here? 9. But there is only one possibility of getting two balls. So the probability of getting two balls there is going to be so C1, P. 2, okay, I'll just write this, 2 BB, so probability of getting two, two blue holes, this one here is going to be 1 over 9. If you want, you can just write it as, what? Yeah, they say 2 blue holes here. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Right. okay, right. I think it's better to just multiply the two probabilities. Okay, so. Oh, and I. So I'll just write P and. So P, B, and B. So that would be 1 over 5 times 1 over 5. You get 1 over 25. Right? Then the next one. Selecting a blue ball and then a white ball. So, we have a blue one, then a white ball. So that would be a half and one over five. So P, 
Even white. So that would be one comma five. Next time is half. One over five times a half, you get one over ten. Then a red and then a blue. Well, please be away here. It's a red and then a blue. But we can also have a blue and a red. Now we are talking about the case where you pick a red first, then after that you pick a what? A blue one. So P, P, R, and P. Yeah. Okay. Probability of picking a red and then a blue. Now, based on this word and then, if it was only selecting a red ball and a blue ball, then you need to also consider the, the case where you pick a what? A blue face and a red one. But here it's a red and then a what? A blue one. Yes. So when the probability is the same either way. Yes, but you see, you have two possibilities now. You can either pick a red and, and then a what? A blue one. Or you would pick a what? A blue and then a red. In that case now, you have to add the products of the probabilities. Do you understand what I'm saying? It is like this. You can pick a red, then a blue. Or you can pick a blue and then a red. In this case here, in this case here, you add the, this probability to that. But here the question is, 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 is mentioning the sequence of picking the, the ball. You pick a red and then you pick a what? A blue second. Okay? So that would be a red and then a blue. So that would be 3 over 10 times 1 over 5. So this would be 3 over 10 times 1 over 5. And then you get 3 over 50. Right? Then selecting two balls of the same color. <coughs> now two balls of the same color. We have three possibilities. We have got that one, we have this one, and then we have got that one. So it's three over ten. So it could have been three balls of the same color. So that would be 3 over 10 times 3 over 10 plus, plus 1 over 5 times 1 over 5 plus a half times a half. So if you simplify you get 9 over 100 plus 1 over 25 plus a quarter. You add the first three what answer we get? Uh, it's 19 over 50. 19 over 50. Okay, then the last one, last one is a little bit tricky now. It says selecting at least one blue ball. Now, it doesn't mention the order here. In what order are you going to select at least one blue? Now, I can do it as the opposite. What is the probability of not getting at least one blue? Okay, then I can subtract that from what? From one. You follow what I'm saying? You can determine the probability of not getting a blue and then we subtract it from what? From one. So what is the that probability of not getting a blue? So we have got this one here. We have got uh, that one. Okay. This one is a blue one. That's a blue one. There's no blue there. There's also a white one. So we might need those combinations. And let me just highlight them properly. So we've got this one, then we've got number two, then number three, and then number four. Okay, please be aware that this one here, its probability is the same as that. They are the same. Okay, so what's the probability of getting two then? So to do the last one, I'm going to say, Probability at least one blue. Okay, at least the probability of getting at least one blue 
is going to be equal to 1 minus the probability of not a blue or So this will be equal to 1 minus. Now we have got two reds. What's the probability of getting two reds? It's 9 over 100 plus we have got the probability of getting a red and a white and then a white and a red. Well, that will be 2 times. If you go back to the T diagram, the probability of getting a red and a white is 3 over 10 plus a half, which is 3 over 20. But there are two of them. So that will be 3 over 20 plus the probability of getting those two white ones, so it's a half times a half, which is a quarter. So we get a quarter there. So if you simplify, it's 9 over 100 plus 6 over 20 plus a quarter. What number do you get? Uh, 9 over 25. Get 9 over 25. Is it 9 over 25? Can I explain what I mean? Yeah. Okay, so the middle branches. So the, the first instance, the first event, you can pick a blue, right. and then from the blue, it branches off into blue, red, blue, 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 blue white. Yeah. So those three, blue, red, blue, blue, and blue, white, they'll add up to one. Yes. So why even bother multiplying one over five times one, one over five? Okay. So over here, in the middle branch, the chance of getting a, uh, the chance of getting a blue is pretty much 100%. So you can take the entire one over five. You take the one over five, and then you add that to the probability of getting a blue in the top branches, which is going to be um, the probability of red blue. And then you're going to add the two over five. You can say you add the two. I don't know You're going to add 3 over 2 times 1 over 5 plus 1 over 5 plus 1 over 5 times 1 over 5. Okay. That's quite easy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's quite easy.